Hey guys, Snooker here. As we know, being preppers, we know there may be an incident to where we're going to have to bug out. So we have our bug out bags prepared and ready to go. So if we have to bug out, we can hopefully make it to another safe destination and hold us over in the meantime. But how many preppers actually take into thought or consideration of having to actually survive either out in the wilderness or at least travel through the wilderness outside on foot to get where they need to go? This is why whenever you're prepping your bug out bags or any type of situation that may relate to that, you should also prepare ahead of time for considering things such as external parasites like ticks. Ticks, as we know, uh, are able to transfer a Lyme disease, which could include things such as uh, fatigue, headache, fever, muscle, joint pain, rashes, you name it. That is definitely something a prepper does not want to deal with when they're going through an SHTF situation. Matter of fact, that's something I'm sure nobody wants to deal with, but of course it's even worse when you're in that type of environment. So how exactly can you get yourself ready to handle things such as ticks? While doing your research, watching videos like this, going online, looking at ways to handle ticks, obviously will keep you better prepared. I also recommend for your bug out bags that you uh, print out a hard copy document of things to do, like one little cheat sheet of things to do if you encounter a tick. As well, I'm going to outline some steps in this video to help you out and some products you may want to take with you. I'm under the assumption that everybody kind of has an idea what a tick looks like. But I know there are some people out there that have never had a tick before, or at least they don't know it. Ticks are very stealthy little parasites that can latch onto you. Sometimes you can feel them crawling, sometimes you can't. As well, what they do is they embed their head into your body and they end up sucking their blood until they gorge themselves on the blood that you have inside of you. That's how they live. Uh, the thing about it is, is when they're doing that process, you can't really feel it because they release certain little painkillers that kind of keep them under stealth mode. So, the number one thing you want to do to identify a tick is to make sure you give yourself a self-inspection if you're alone or if you have a partner traveling with you and you trust them of course have them inspect you and you inspect them make sure you check all over your skin remove clothing as needed and also check your scalp or your partner's scalp to make sure they're clear and good to go because honestly ticks could be anywhere and uh, matter of fact if you travel with a pet it's very important that you also check your pet as well on a daily basis because uh, they are more susceptible than you are for contracting ticks. You may want to stock up on uh, Frontline or K9 Advantage or whatever to uh, some tick prevention for your pet. So you just completed a self-inspection and you found a tick. Now what are you going to do? Well first let me show you the things you are not supposed to do if you find a tick. Number one thing you should not do, and this is what they taught back in the days when they thought it was okay, you should not burn the tick. Okay, burning the tick is going to cause that tick to regurgitate its fluids back into your body. Remember, the tick is an external parasite. It's there to engorge itself on your blood. If you light with fire on the back of that tick, you can possibly regurgitate infected fluids that is carried around with it into your body. And that is definitely going to increase your risk of infection, getting Lyme disease, so forth and so on. So remember, do not burn the tick. Say it again. Do not burn the tick. You don't want to do that. As well, another thing you don't want to do is you don't want to use other additives like they did back in the day. Don't put petroleum jelly and cover the site while the tick is on it. Now, what petroleum jelly does, as well as rubbing alcohol, it will suffocate the tick. If the tick is suffocated, once again, it's going to regurgitate all those fluids back into its host, which would be you, your pet, or your partner. And once again, you are increasing your risk of getting infection with Lyme disease or any other type of disease that a tick may be carrying around with it. So, don't use petroleum jelly, don't use rubbing alcohol, and once again... Don't use fire. You're probably wondering now, what is the best way that I can safely remove the tick from my body? And really the answer to that question is, the best way you can remove a tick from your body 
Let's do extraction. You can use a pair of tweezers. Tweezers, if you have a, the point, you want to go straight down to the side of where the mouth of the tick is impacting your skin. You're going to pull a pressure on it as close as you can, and you're going to pull the tick straight out. Don't twist, and do not squeeze the belly, because once again, if you do that, all the fluids are going to go right back into your body to include infected fluids if it's infected, and you don't want that. So once again, add a little bit of pressure, just pull it straight out. Or, you can do what I'm doing. I did some search on the internet, and I found these little tick removing tools, I don't know if you know about them, but they're called the uh, Otob Tick Twister. So you got the fan there. And uh, these are very unique. I think they come over from Europe. I'm not very sure though. But uh, I really couldn't find this anywhere uh, from reputable places I wanted to buy, not even Amazon. So I uh, went to the site itself. Once again, they're called Otob Tick Twisters. You can Google it and find it. And uh, they run $5.99 single pair or I bought three for bug out bags of course and for three there are five dollars each so I paid 50 bucks to get all three of them now you're probably wondering oh that's special Nuka but what, what's so special about that why'd you spend your money on it well the cool thing about these is of course this is perfect for your prepper because it requires no power no sunlight I mean obviously you gotta see where it ticks at but it doesn't require any power or energy to utilize these they just work off your own fingers. And uh, I'll show you how they work. All the directions here on the back. Let's see if we get a good view here. If you look there, first they have a uh, big size and a small size. And it's all going to be dependent on what size tick you're dealing with. And uh, what you want to do is, as you can tell from the directions, they're very easy to see. You're just going to scoop so you can cup the tick's body in between the little twisters. And when you do the twisting, the tick comes completely out. I mean, it's pretty awesome. They got a YouTube video on it, the old Tom Tick Twister. Uh, I'll probably add it to the description so you guys can take a look at it. But uh, the unique thing about it is, is that this works on humans and it works on pets. Uh, and you can see right there in English it says, do not pull the tick, but rotate until it attaches. And honestly, that is it. Yeah, the tick's out of there. Like I said, uh, I saw the videos and I became a firm believer in this. So as you can tell, this is the large size. And this here is the small size. So here, you have two different sizes, all depending on the size of the tick. In which you should be able to cup the tick up on your skid. Twist. Until it detaches, you can pull it straight out. Now... When you actually have the tick removed, that's when you want to go ahead and bring back your rubbing alcohol. It can be 70% isopropyl. And uh, of course disinfect the area and add a bandage on top because it is a fresh wound. Uh, like I said, you know, this video is pretty much about removing ticks more than anything or any type of external parasite. I just want y'all to get to the mindset of thinking, you know, if I do have to go outside of my house and travel to another destination, you know, I, you don't want to be left missing something. And I think ticks are something you can definitely come across, especially if you have to go walking through forests or out in the woods where all that stuff lives. We're so comfortable living in our house, we don't really think about things like ticks bothering us until we've gone outside and we've done a little hunting or a little fishing or, hey, do some walking until we get to a safe location. So, uh, like I said, these things were called the uh, Otob Tick Twisters. You know, see if it's something you want to add to your preps or not. And, uh, like I said, I ordered straight from the website. So, I'll uh, see if I can find that YouTube video, post a link. Other that, guys, once again, prepare, stay safe. If you have any other useful tips that you've done research on for removing ticks or any other things you can think of we may encounter, if we were to go outside, please post that in the description to help the other preppers out. The more people that prep, the better off the world would be. Hopefully you guys found this video informational. Until then, rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Later.